Aloha, everyone. Uh, welcome. Happy holidays. Um, to prepare perhaps for whatever big adventures you have the rest of the week and the weekend. Um, the holidays are such an uplifting time, but sometimes that upward moving energy can feel a little frenetic and chaotic. And so today we'll be focusing on connecting to the feet and the core and letting our, our big, expressive, joyful, wonderful, radiant movements come from this really... Um, grounded place. So with that, I invite you to create a grounded, sacred play space for yourself by spreading out a blanket over your yoga mat. Um, one or two additional blankets might come in handy if you're feeling cozy. And with that, we can um, all turn to the left and make our way onto our bellies. So take your time. I see some setting up happening. Please don't rush. Enjoy each moment, even gathering your blankets. See if you can enjoy that. And then when you do eventually make it to your belly, stack the hands, elbows wide, forehead to the back of the hands. And make sure this is comfortable. If you need extra space to breathe or extra space for your chest, you can always place blankets underneath the arms to prop yourself up a little higher. Try closing the mouth. And as you breathe, you may feel the relationship between the front of the body and the earth. Also, bring your awareness to the back of the body. So as the belly expands, Try to also let the back of the rib cage, the, the back of the diaphragm expand as well. We'll just take several centering breaths. And as you breathe into the diaphragm, you may notice that you have the opportunity to relax the muscles in the neck, in the shoulders, in the chest. So give yourself space, make little wiggles, and make sure you're benefiting from the results of diaphragmatic breathing. And then bend the knees so the toes point up towards the sky. And really, really small, really, really slow, start to windshield wiper the feet from side to side. Make sure that this movement is gentle so there's no twisting in the knees. And gently begin to massage the front of the thighs. Maybe you can even notice sensation in the low back as the femurs, the thigh bones internally and externally rotate in the hip socket and pull on the muscles all the way up the backs of the thighs into the thoracolumbar fascia. And then Imagine your feet like two cute little snowflakes starting to drift down from the sky and let them slowly flutter towards the earth. I saw some extra wiggling of toes. I wasn't expecting that, but if you have that capacity, by all means, you can play with that. And then once the feet land, notice that sensation of being held and supported by the earth. Notice any sense of relief and softening that's available. Even though that was a gentle movement, the hamstrings had to work to elevate the feet. So maybe you can feel a sense of ah, softening through the backs of the legs. And let's wake up the upper body a little bit. So prop yourself up on your elbows and be really gentle with this, but push 
down and slightly wide with the elbows and notice how the rib cage can lift and rise into the shoulder girdle when you do that. And let's shift the weight over into the right forearm and then push down into the right forearm to shift the weight over into the left forearm. And again, be really gentle. Let the hands be soft. Favor the pinky side of the hand. Let the middle knuckles lift. And start to play with drawing some circles with the shoulder girdle. So instead of just going left and right, you've got a little bit forward, a little bit back. And we're not trying to stretch. We want to be really gentle here. So less is more. And use this as an opportunity to notice the relationship between the arms and the shoulders, between the arms and the chest and the back body can start to circle the opposite direction and the most important thing here is that the neck feels really light no work is happening in the neck because the support is coming from the rib cage and the core and the arms and the earth and then come back to center slide the arms forward let the forehead come down and let the armpits gently lengthen and stretch slightly you can push the fingertips down and lift the wrist to get a little bit more space you can even curl the fingers a little further forward if that feels good and then relax that completely and again notice that sensation of the earth supporting the hands, the elbows, the forehead. And you're welcome to adjust the arms, perhaps making them a little wider, like a Y or a soft W, whatever feels the least effortful or the most <laughs> effortless. Mm. If you're following along with our musical playlist, which I highly recommend because it was curated specifically for holiday time, you can hit play on the first track called A Light Snow um, and make sure that's set to loop until I tell you to go to the next track. So now lengthen the left arm long and gently reach back with the left foot so you feel that space through the whole left side of the body. Draw the right arm underneath the shoulder and gently push into the right arm so that you roll on to the left side and you should be facing me, hopefully, if we did everything right. And ever so gently start to melt the body forward, melt the body back, move slowly doesn't matter how far forward and back you go so instead try to feel what's interesting what's inviting what is the body craving and then find a center point where you feel balanced and allow the top leg to gently slide back so that the hip extends you shouldn't feel this at all in the low back so you don't want any arching in the low back and then allow the right arm to glide forward and up and we're going to play a little tug of war between right hand and right foot so start to pull the right arm forward and notice how it pulls on the shoulder on the rib cage the right hip might start to close towards the floor and then start to reach the right foot back behind you and notice now how the hip opens and the foot can come onto the floor if that feels more um, enjoyable on the hips you can play with that and let the leg pull you open any amount there's no right or wrong and then the arm pulls and start to play with this tug of war between the upper and the lower body becoming the most interested in where the limbs connect into the torso and this really isn't about stretching. It's actually more about waking up the core. So you want to feel very integrated. Feel how the core supports the leg. And 
And the next time the arm starts to slide forward, gently return to the belly, but take your time noticing that support of the core that you've woken up and pause on the belly. And we'll go to the other side. So you'll be rolling away from me, but you know what you're about to do. So hopefully you feel up for that. Drag the left hand down, push into the left hand, rolling onto the right side. We start with those gentle rocks. So just a little bit forward, a little bit back. Make sure you're moving really slowly. So it feels literally like the body is pooling in a little puddle, dripping forward, and then doing the same thing backward. Almost like more surface area is being created between your body and the earth. And then find a middle point to balance. Let the left leg now gently reach behind you option to put the foot down if that feels more comfortable the knee can certainly bend and then slide the left arm forward and up and start to reach with the foot letting the body pull towards resting on the back and then reach with the arm letting the body pull towards resting on the belly and feel how the arm connects via the shoulder to the rib cage and the rib cage integrates down into the pelvis and so everything you do with the leg translates all the way to the hand everything you do with the arm translates all the way down to the foot take a couple more And then slowly let the left arm win the game of tug of war, pulling you onto your belly, but just as effortlessly as you did those side body rocks. And stack the hands, elbows wide, rest the forehead, and let your body take in all that information. And then reach the arms forward once again. Rock the pelvis gently forward and gently back until you find a place where the pelvis is neutral and it should take a little bit of core engagement. You should feel um, a brightening in the core when you find that neutral. For me, it feels like my tailbone reaches back and my sacrum almost like nestles down into the ilium. So I don't know if that's helpful, but that feels really good to me. And it's not a tucking or a gripping of the glutes. It really is this lengthening and engagement of the core. So maintain that as you play with lifting the right foot and the right foot shouldn't lift very high. Um, we're just hovering it away from the ground and you want to make sure that you're feeling your glutes engage and if the pelvis is neutral as you lift the foot you should feel a pretty strong contraction on the back of the hip so play with that on both legs you can lower and lift a couple of times and bring your awareness to the back of the hip and you shouldn't feel anything in the low back here right it's not coming from the spine extending it's all coming from the hip extending. And the next time the left leg lifts, pause there and notice um, the height that is comfortable and play with reaching forward with the left arm and reaching over to the right with the left arm and see if you can lift the leg a little higher and then come back down and we'll try that same thing on the other side so you lift the right leg and it's probably not very high right because we're only using our glutes and then start to reach forward and to the left with the right arm and notice if you can get a little extra lift and then come back down and we'll do that same thing now with opposite arm and leg so lift the left leg and play with lifting the right arm and see how Adding in the upper body gives you more lift and reach. Notice how those two relate and then swap sides. 
And so this is what we're eventually going to play with standing, using the whole body to help us get in a little deeper extension with the spine. Let's do um, one more each side with the opposite arm. And in addition to the back bend, I want you to add in a little side bend, circling the rib cage like we did when we were on our forearms and then try the other side and less is more it doesn't have to be a big action i just want you to start feeling safe side bending and back bending at the same time because sometimes that's a little unfamiliar make sure you're breathing and then once you've done the second side you can relax the arms down relax the forehead and let's take a mini downward facing shavasana do anything with the arms that's comfortable and relaxing. I prefer a diamond with my arms. I really like that feeling. And slide the arm, the hands underneath the shoulders. Gently push into the hands to send the hips back to the heels. Melt the forehead. Take a pause in Bhaktasana and just notice if the low back feels tender. The movements that we're doing really should not aggravate the low back at all. So if you're feeling that, know without any judgment that you may have a tendency to, to push yourself a little too far. <laughs> so just witness that and take stock and um, please let that encourage you to be gentle as we continue. So push down into the shins. And as you do that, allow the spine to round as you weightlessly float into cat pose. That's when your spine is arched. And then we'll meet in cat pose and we're gonna jump rope the spine a few times. So to practice this, first stay in cat and just shift the weight from knee to knee. And actually at the same time, hand to hand. So towards the whole right side to the whole left side. Notice how this takes the rounding to the lateral edges of the body, not just the middle. And then the next time you're shifted all the way to the right, um, start to gently melt the belly down and reach the heart forward for cow pose, shift it onto the right side, and then start to shift from side to side in cow pose, just like we did in cat. And we'll put that all together. So the next time you shift to the left, push down into the left hand and left knee to round the spine into cat, and then shift over to the right cat. Drop into cow and shift back to the right. And then once you've got the hang of it, you can start to smooth it out, moving really nice and slow. Letting the whole body create this barrel shape. And the next time you sway to the left, reverse the order and take your time. Make sure you're breathing. And notice what your neck is doing. I have a tendency to drop my head down, which isn't great. <laughs> so if anyone else needs the awareness to just keep the head in extension of the spine. So the back of the neck is nice and long. The gaze is slightly ahead of the hands, maybe just a few inches. And then come back to center. Send the hips to the heels, slide the forearms forward, palms face up, and you can gently massage the forehead or gently massage the wrists, whatever feels good as a counter pose. And then let the pelvis get really heavy so it starts to drop towards the heels. Push down into the shins and slowly let one vertebra at a time stack so you're seated on your heels. Push down into the shins and float into kneeling and then turn three quarters towards me. So just like 15 degrees, just so it's a little easier to see me. Um, bring your hands to your hip creases 
and we'll send the hips back into a chair-like action, but then we'll curl the pelvis under. I, I'll actually turn so you can see. We'll curl the pelvis under, push down into the shins to slowly rise up. You're doing it right if your quadriceps get tired from this action. So from chair, curl the pelvis under, push down into the shins to slowly come back up, and now we'll add on. From the top position, We'll keep shoulders, hips, knees in a straight line and take a little rock back. This is my favorite psoas strengthener. And then we'll float back up and we'll repeat from the hip curl. So chair pose and then tuck the tailbone, push down into the shins to float up, letting the spine slowly lengthen. And then take your rock back. And now that you know it, you can go at your own pace, but I do recommend moving really slowly here. Try to feel equal weight in both shins. Usually there's one leg that's a little stronger and wants to over dominate. So see if you can balance it out or at least observe that pattern. We'll just do one more. And then we'll all meet at kneeling. And for me, that's like a surprising amount of work. So just pause for a moment and just absorb and observe any sense of warmth. And we'll be doing some stuff on our knees. So I invite you to grab your blanket, even if you don't have sensitive joints. Um, let's treat ourselves. <laughs> And take a moment to shift the weight into one knee and then the other. And then let the shifting get less and less until you find a place that feels like completely balanced between both legs. And that means the signals coming up from the legs keep the pelvis completely balanced, the core completely balanced allowing the shoulder girdle to rest on the rib cage equally. And then pause when you find that place that feels balanced to you. Um, now's a great spot to have a drink of water and to go to the second track, which also has the word snow in it. <laughs> I can't remember what it is though exactly. Okay, from kneeling, let's step the left foot forward in a short 90-90 lunge. Bring the hands to the hips and take a couple of really small hip circles just to be aware of the orientation of the pelvis, letting the quads wake up, letting the hamstrings wake up and finding um, support on the inside of the thigh as well. And then when you've found a nice place for the pelvis to rest, scoop the arms up and take a couple of nice, easy breaths here. And then start to push down into the right knee, letting that downward pressure let the whole right side of the body grow. Drop the bottom arm and we'll use an exhale to float the bottom arm. Let's try that a couple of times on your own breath cycle. So the inhale drops the arm, the exhale floats it, and you should get a little taller and longer as the arm floats. Once you've got the hang of that, um, the next time the arm drops, come up to neutral, and then exhale, do it all at once, side bending and floating. And we'll take a couple with that whole thing together. Bring some awareness to the front foot and front knee and let it stay in the same place. So even as the body moves, there's a sense of stability through the legs. Okay. And the next time you start to come up, 
lower the right hand over to the right allow the left leg to slide past center so you can place your hands down for a modified pigeon keep the knee where it is you don't need to swivel it or anything and start to circle the hips and then pause at center shift the weight into the left hand reach the right arm forward and then up and back opening through that whole right side take a couple of those circles and try to feel how the movement of the arm relates to the movement of the rib cage and how that relates to the pelvis the next time the arm circles and comes down we'll have two options for transitions here the first option is to just slide the left knee in come up and then step the left foot forward um, we'll do the more complicated transition in a second so let's all do that one first and we'll be going right into our side bend from there so you can take a couple with the arm pulse like we practiced and then the next time you come up the right hand sweeps left leg slides all the way back this time we go right into our circling pigeon with the right arm circling into that right leg take a couple of circles and then the right hand plants. Now you can either step the left knee forward in line with the right or step it all the way forward right into our reaching side bend. Just make sure that feels okay on the right knee because it is a big leap. Take a couple of your side bends and we'll do this two more times at our own pace. So when you're ready, you'll slide the foot back into pigeon one or two arm circles whatever feels good to you and then either slide the left knee forward or push down with the right knee and step it all the way forward right into the side bending lunge take a couple of the side bending pulses and then last one on this last one, if you want to swivel the shin slightly, you can by lifting the front knee, swiveling the shin only with the strength of the hip, don't use your hand, um, and then take one more arm circle in that deeper position if the body's craving it. Plant the hand, lunge, and we'll meet in the side bend of the lunge. Bring the left hand to the left hip, and we'll add some shearing um, of the right side of the body, gently rotating the heart down and then rotating the heart open and for these shearing actions we really want this to translate all the way down into the right hip and even the right outer thigh so it's it is in the rib cage but it's so much bigger than that so try to feel that gentle rotation going all the way down towards the knee as these layers of muscle glide on one another And pause relax the arm and um, we are actually going to come to standing before we do the second side just so you can feel what just happened in your body um, so relax the arms forward slide the right foot up bend the knees deeply into your uttanasana you can sway the hips a little if that feels good and then come up your favorite way if you're not sure my favorite way is to drop my sits bones push my pelvis forward and slowly roll up don't do that if you have arthritis float the arms maybe even add in an arm circle and then pause in tadasana close the eyes if that feels safe notice the discrepancy between sides and then go for a little walk around your space uh, just noticing the right side of the body we did a lot of work some pigeons on the right side, some awesome lunges, and then that shearing. So um, notice any sense of freedom, spaciousness. And then make your way back to the mat. And I guess, why don't we, as long as we're doing this, 
swap the blanket so that when we do the second side, it's easier to, to see me. Um, we'll meet in kneeling. And we'll do another round of our um, pelvic curls and our rock backs because um, it is kind of a tricky movement and sometimes the body gets it better the second time. So from kneeling, hands to the front of the pelvis, start to hinge the hips and then tuck the tailbone under, push down into the shins, letting the hips slowly roll up. Once you've made it to the top, bend the knees, rocking back and then float to center. We'll repeat or continue at your own pace. Make sure you're breathing. And I'm being a bad example. You don't have to hinge quite so far, especially if it feels hard or asymmetrical. Try less. That will help your body understand the movement. Then you can load it more. Okay, the next time you're kneeling, pause there and hopefully, okay, I think I got it. Shift the weight into the left knee, step the right foot forward into your 90-90 lunge. Pause for a moment and then start to circle the hips just so you have more awareness of the attachments in the back leg up into the pelvis. So noticing the inner left thigh, the front of the left thigh, the outside, the back and maybe the connections of the pelvis into the upper core, the side bodies, the low back, the deep navel area. And then find what feels centered for you. Float the arms and take a couple of breaths, nice and easy. Make sure the shoulders are soft so it's almost like your shoulder girdle just, ah, just resting on the rib cage effortlessly. And then we'll play with our side bend. So um, push down into the left knee, let the body start to reach up and lengthen up and over to the right, feeling a unity through the whole left side of the body. And then drop, right arm. Use your next exhale to hover the right arm and notice how that brightens the core. And then inhale to release. Take a few pulses on your own. And the next time the right arm goes to drop, bring the torso up to neutral. And then as you exhale, the arm floats as you side bend. So you make it a little more complicated. And inhale, arm drops center. Exhale, float and bend. For me, when, when I do this in unison, that's when the magic really happens, when I can really feel the connectivity of my legs into my core. And it's really not um, a bunch of muscles moving me, but really a unified force. Everything works together. And the next time you side bend, you're welcome to breathe there for one breath. And then as you gently come out of it, let the left hand plant, slide the right foot back, setting up for pigeon. And we'll start with just some hip circles here and try to press down with the back toes and the front knees. So there's a sense of the pelvis really floating. What really opens our hips is when they're strong and balanced. We don't need to stretch our hip flexors. Circle the opposite direction. And then level the pelvis, shift the weight into the right hand, take the left arm forward up and back, rotating. And try to feel how the rib cage is pulling on the pelvis, how the two are connected. We don't want to just move from the rib cage. The next time the arm circles down, we'll first take our um, option one transition where right knee slides in, we come up to kneeling and then right leg continues. So we're back in the lunge on the same side. Float the arms, Anjane Asana, drop the right arm, and then with your exhale, side bend and hover the arm. 
take one more. Try to feel all the way down into the left knee. And then as you come out of it, hand goes right to the earth, foot slides back. Once you're in pigeon, shift the weight into the right hand and let the left arm circle one or two times, depending on your pace. The next time the hand plants, you can either come up to kneeling or you can just power into the left knee to step the right foot all the way forward going into the side bend. Please honor your body. One is not better than the other. They're just options. And then come out of the side bend right into your circling pigeon. Last round. When you come into your next pigeon, you have the option to hover the front knee, swivel the shin with the strength of your hip socket alone, or the muscles in the hip socket, um, and then take one slightly deeper pigeon. If you're taking the deeper pigeon, point the knee forward before you transition to the lunge. And once you're in the lunge, right hand to hip and we add the shearing, which is just the gentle rotation forward and back. And kind of like the tug of war that we did on the floor before, try to feel how the rib cage pulling forward pulls the pelvis forward pulls the outer thigh forward and then vice versa as the rib cage opens. And then come to center, release the hands down inside of the right foot, tuck back toes, hop the back foot forward, bend the knees deeply, pause in Uttanasana, let the pelvis get really heavy. It's fine to sway the hips or shift the weight from foot to foot if the body's craving that. And then come up your favorite way, as long as there's no pain. Heel toe the feet underneath the hips and pause. Now noticing the left side of the body or the body as a whole. And you can move your blanket out of the way. Feel free to have another little sip of water and you can go for a short walk. And make your way back towards your mat. And let's meet facing me at the center of the mat, interlace the hands behind the head um, and start to push down into the left foot. And as you push down into the left foot, let the spine first lengthen upward, but then let your body start to reach over to the right and maybe even back a little. I'm gonna go to the side so you can see what my spine is doing. And I want you to remember um, what we explored here, the reaching with the arms and the foot and how that allowed you to support the spine. And look, I'm not bending that much, right? So release any idea of that, the back bend here being deep. And then let's swap sides. So you push down into the right foot, letting the spine lengthen and open. And then keep playing with this, but you can allow the feet to change positions. And you want to make sure you're feeling this more, really more in the front of the body. If you're noticing anything in the low back, it means you're probably going a little too far in the extension um, is coming more from the low back than the upper back. Hmm. The next time you're swaying over to the left, bend the left knee, release the arms to a T, and slide the right foot behind you for a curtsy. Bring equal weight in both feet, and if you're not sure where your feet should be, it should feel really buoyant. So take a moment, like if you're too far, you're gonna feel it too much in the front hip, 
So wiggle around, find a space where you can have equal weight in both feet, and then play with a little bit of a side bend here. Push into the back foot and notice how that pushing can help you open and explore a little bit of side bending, a little bit of back bending. And then push down into the front foot and slowly rise up into crane. And try to feel as relaxed as possible here. And then set the right foot down. And we'll explore this on the other side. Um, so let's see, we came into it. Push into the left foot, let your body reach and open, and then bend into the right knee and slide the left foot behind you. Bend both knees, equal weight in both feet. Take a couple of curtsies and then open your arms and allow the spine to play a little bit. Allow it to dance in the wind. You can explore a little bit of backbending, only if that feels good. I feel like a few years ago, if I had tried to backbend here, I probably would have not felt great. So don't expect that that will be awesome for everyone. And then start to push down into the right foot and hover the left knee, pause. Get as stable and grounded as possible. Set the left foot down this time. And now we'll add on. So shift into the left foot, hover the right knee. And from here, keep the pelvis as steady and level as possible as you start to kick the foot back and open the arms for a modified dancer. So play with a couple of those. And the next time the foot is behind you, um, you can step it back and play with your curtsy. And then shift the weight forward and we'll switch feet. So now the weight comes over into the right foot, crane, level pelvis, modified dancer, not a deep back bend. And then just play with that a couple of times. And I really like to focus on just lifting my foot and that helps my hip stay a lot more relaxed. If I'm just like, oh, lift foot instead of engage hip. So you can try that. And the next time the leg comes back, cross it behind and play with your curtsy. Shift the weight into the right foot and then step the left foot down. Pause at center. Take a couple of centering breaths. Find a drishti, a steady gaze point. And we're just going to breathe for one minute, gazing at that point. Close the mouth, breathe through the nose. A nice goal is about five breaths, so nice and slow. Let the mind relax, let the body relax. Oh, on our end, the track just ended, so that was awesome. We'll go to the final track, the one I'm most excited about. It's Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy from the Nutcracker. Um, so I, you might not have realized that you were preparing to dance a ballet, but we are all ready now to do our dance. Um, and we're going to add just a little more on. So it's actually going to be fun to um, turn to face the short edge of the mat. And I'm going to demo just one time. Um, we're doing everything you just did, um, but with one transition. So we'll play with our nutcracker into our <laughs> dancer pose. We'll go into that same curtsy. And then the next time we come here, we'll actually step the foot back and go all the way to the other side where we can do the same thing here. And we've got our curtsy back into, I'm calling this nutcracker now actually. Um, and then we'll transition over to the other side or however you want to do it, but I'll talk you through it that way. Um, so let's turn to the left, come to the short edge 
of the mat, paw out the feet. We are balancing, so I invite you to find your drishti. And the next time the weight is in the left foot, relax the arms down and hover the right knee for your nutcracker and start to flow effortlessly back and forth between that and your dancer pose. The next time the foot comes back, cross it behind. Take your curtsy option to put your left hand on the hip so you have a little bit more space to explore the spine. Can get kind of dramatic with your fingertips here. <laughs> and then shift the weight back into the balancing nutcracker. Slide the right foot back and turn all the way to the other side. Shift the weight nutcracker into the other side. Pause there and then start to sparkle between those two shapes and the pelvis stays neutral, right? The leg is going to want to tip the pelvis so it takes a lot of stability to remain firm. Cross the leg behind. You've got your curtsy. Try pushing into the back foot, letting the whole side body open. Try a little spinal extension if that feels safe and then return to your nutcracker and slide the foot back, turning all the way to the other side. So once you've got the hang of it, you can go on at your own pace. You can add things, subtract things, or you can pause in a shape and explore it a little bit longer as long as you're breathing. As your body gets more used to the sequence, see if you can relax and apply less effort. See how little effort you can apply. And the magic is when you do that, more comes alive. You move more gracefully. You actually get stronger even though it feels easier. Let's do one more round to each side or whatever your body's craving. Maybe on this last round you want to hold dancer pose and grab the ankle just to see what's happening there. Or go a little deeper into the curtsy. It can be fun to lower the back knee if the body feels ready for that. And after you have curtsied with the right foot forward, you're balanced out so we can meet in nutcracker and then lower the left foot. And pause and feel your focus drop into the soles of the feet. That was a lot of movement. Sometimes there's a vibration or a sense of energy flowing and see if you can feel that but also feel grounded and connected to the earth. And then we'll start to head towards the earth. Um, face me and let the feet gently paw out as you shift from side to side, letting the feet get wider and wider as is comfortable without any strain. And then once you've found your straddle, let the toes turn out and start to bend the knees, letting the pelvis maintain that neutral position that we've been working on. You can um, gently shift from side to side. Let the arms come wide and gently wave. And then turn the toes forward, bend the knees and keep some weight in the heels. Bring the hands 
to the front of the thighs and gently melt the spine down. I'm going to turn just so you can see me. The more the knees bend here, the eff more effortless it should be for the spine. The hands can slide to the shins, ankles, or even the floor if that's comfortable. We're heading towards the knees. If the body wants to get there sooner, that's fine. If you'd like to sway a little bit here, you can. And then let's lower the knees. So we're in tabletop and turn to your right. So you've got the whole long mat to play with. Step the feet back into plank pose and then bring the right knee into the chest, curl the spine and then lower the right knee and swivel the shin less than you want to. So it's just a little bit. Push down into both legs and slowly press the hips back without sinking and then let the hips lift and play with that a couple of times and the next time the hips come down release the back knee flatten the back foot and walk the hands in um, squeeze the legs towards one another slightly so you feel really buoyant in the pelvis you can stay right here or you can play with coming all the way up floating the arms just like we did in goddess and gently reaching from side to side planting one hand to one side adding a little side bend and then release the hands forward lower to the forearms resist the urge to just sink the hips but instead breathe here and relax while still keeping the hips supported Shift the weight into the outer right hip. Let the right foot come in a little bit so that you can sh open up to Parvrita Jhana Shirshasana and just take a nice easy side bend. And then as you come out of it, stack the legs, returning to tabletop, but then pivot to the other side because it'll just help the second side go smoother. So from plank, curl the left knee in set the left knee down push down into the front shin and the back toes so the pelvis lifts and then with that strength you can play with lowering the hips and floating them a couple of times and it should feel like both thighs are working together they're not pulling apart from one another the next time the hips lower lower the knee flatten the foot walk the hands in take a couple of breaths here check in with the low back you want to find that sense of the sacrum lengthening downward just like we practiced on our belly at the beginning of class you can wiggle from side to side and then do what any whatever variation you played with on the first side and then as you're ready you can come into the more restorative version but please don't just sink the hips down keep a sense of support and lightness sometimes gently wagging the tail just keeps things moving so you don't sink into your joints and then let the hips sway to the left lower the left hip down follow that momentum so the right leg turns open and just a nice ah, easy side bend and then push down into the right leg to float back up um, pause your music because it's a little bit exciting and <laughs> we want to chill out a little bit more um, we'll be making our way towards shavasana and we'll have extra time in shavasana to let the nervous system calibrate and let ourselves feel very nourished and rejuvenated by our practice. If there's anything that your body is craving before that, um, please be my guest, take a moment to explore. And then when you're ready, I'll just give a couple of tips for things I like to do in my Shavasana prep. Um, first, have a warm layer on because your body temperature will drop as you relax. Feel free to dim the lights. Feel free to grab an eye pillow. Um, socks can be nice. And then um, the classic knee behind the legs um, is really supportive 
and relaxing for the low back. I also like an additional blanket. This one's a little awkward because you have to open it so wide, um, but an additional blanket that goes over the belly because that's grounding, but then it also supports the arms. So there's this nice soft flowing energy from the shoulder down to the elbow to the hand. Um, so if you have enough blankets, I invite you to try that, but you might have your favorite Shavasana and that's great. And we have extra time. So notice if you're like rushing to Shavasana, right? Like you're hurrying up to relax and see if you can let go of that tendency and let the process of getting to Shavasana be part of the enjoyment, part of the exploration. Take your time. Maybe as you arrive on your back, you realize, yeah, I see some counter poses happening. Let that bubble up. And it's totally fine if you're still exploring. You have plenty of time. And when you do finally make it to a comfortable relaxation pose, take a moment to feel the earth beneath you and that sense of support and anchoring and also notice any lightness that you've cultivated through your dancing and your playing and your exploring. Also the lightness that's available when everyone's excited about holidays and family and perhaps time off. <laughs> and try to feel both of those things happening at once. And sometimes it's like a zooming out where you can see yourself and the big picture. And we'll let ourselves rest here in this perfect balance for about 15 minutes. I'm gonna do it too. <laughs>
And just like we were practicing heading into Shavasana, notice any tendency you might have to rush coming out of Shavasana or perhaps the mind is already starting to plan what's next and see if you can let that go and let yourself be completely present in your body and make gentle movements with the fingers and the toes tune in to the breath often it's easiest to feel the nuance of the breath when you're just awakening from Shavasana you can gently smile and notice how that affects your internal state mm. I'll guide a couple of gentle movements or you can do whatever your body is craving Letting the arms reach overhead, letting yourself gently roll a little bit from side to side, maybe even rolling onto one side and massaging like we did at the beginning, those gentle little tiny rocks. And then if you're doing that, you can do it on the other side. And let yourself explore your body, your breath with a deeper appreciation and clarity. And start pointing yourself towards your meditation seat, but you don't need to rush. You can keep taking the scenic route. And then give yourself the props and the time that it takes to find a comfortable way to sit. eventually let yourself arrive in stillness and you don't need to rush and feel the support beneath you those contact points in the legs and the hips and tune into your breath flow and just like we practiced in the physical part of class See if you can feel how the legs create the foundation from which you can lengthen effortlessly up through the spine in a really relaxed way. And you can close the eyes or gaze at a single point. Close the mouth and gently let the tongue rest up towards the roof of the mouth, just parallel. The whole tongue lifts just a little bit. And let your focus drop towards the heart center. Mm, I have really been enjoying working with my heart in kind of a backwards way and so as you inhale try to focus on the very very centermost point in the chest and as you 
exhale imagine the heart glowing brighter and brighter and so each inhale as you naturally become very expansive keep your focus really centered and singular and then on the exhale when it becomes very easy to sink into that point you feel that brightening and that expanding and you can visualize it or literally feel it. Mm. When we reverse the work of the inhale and exhale, we can really bring a sense of surrender to each breath and so let yourself relax and find that balance between single pointed focus and reaching and expanding And if you haven't already attached a mantra to this focused breath at the heart center, I invite you to use Om Namah Shivaya. And as you repeat the mantra, there is a, a work that you're doing. And see if you can be really receptive. And let yourself feel and experience the mantra as you gently generate it.
We have just a couple more minutes. And so let each breath be an exploration of balance, of feeling a sense of groundedness and safety, but also expansion and even bliss. Letting yourself be really relaxed. And if you're too relaxed or drowsy or unfocused, you can bring your attention more to the inhale and more to that single pointed focus at the heart. Mm. On the contrary, if your mind feels really active and you feel really energized and you want to bring more calming energy, you can focus more on the exhale and the experience of letting the heart brighten, and letting yourself become more and more expansive. And if you're not sure, just keep focusing equally on both. Thank you so much for being here and practicing. I know it's such a busy time, um, so it's, it's worth extra for your inner self when you arrive in these moments. Namaste.